Welcome back to Suncoast FYI. It's never too late to think about your future. Whether you're planning to retire now or 50 years from now, it's a good idea to start planning. Matt McSwain, financial advisor for the investment company of Edward Jones, joins me today, and he has some words of wisdom for those planning for their retirement. And thank you for being here, Matt. Oh, thank we you really for really appreciate me. it. Now, one of the groups that you deal with are people uh, nearing retirement. And of course, uh, there's a lot of concerns about social security benefits right now and all of the changes that are going on. How can you help people um, understand what their different options are? Oh, thanks for asking. The well, when it comes to Social Security benefits, there's a lot of different ways that people can file for benefits. And so one of the things that I do is kind of help them for their individual situation, too. So the hard part with investments and kind of finances in general is the most dangerous information is just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's things you might hear at the water cooler and what someone else did. But there's over 2,000 laws out there when it comes to Social Security mm -hmm. and trying to determine what impacts your individual situation. What I do is kind of sit down with them, kind of find out about you and say, well, tell me, you know, are you married now? Were you married before? Mm -hmm. um, two, are you going to keep on working too? So like all these things impact kind of how you can file and what your options are with that. Mm -hmm. and, and again, like you said, these, it, it's an individual case by case because I know, um, you know, personally I've started looking into it. And if you were born in 1953, the laws are different than 1954 because mm -hmm. you can retire at an earlier age. Is that true? Yeah. So one of the things that Social Security has done to try and extend those benefits a little bit longer is change really what's called your full retirement age. Mm -hmm. And what that impacts is when you're allowed to file for benefits with less restrictions too. Okay. So uh, one of those restrictions of course is income. Mm -hmm. So believe it or not, 62 is the earliest that everyone can file for benefits in normal situations. Mm -hmm. And at 62, they actually limit how much income you can earn. So for most individuals, unless you're working for minimum wage, um, it's gonna really reduce that benefit. And once you file for benefits, that reduction's permanent too. Okay. So outside of a few situations you can get out of, but for the most part, you lock in a lower benefit that impacts you for life. Okay, so uh, I mean th that's one of the challenges that that people people have to deal with is like what age do I retire at? And um, okay, so 62 is the earliest age. What is the uh, I guess the the optimal age, and what is that based on? Is that based on income over a certain period of time during the course of your life? Mm -hmm. So, and that's one of those things where some people hear, like, how, how do they actually calculate your benefits? Mm -hmm. um, years ago, everybody used to get in the mail that Social Security statement and told you every year, here's an estimate of what your benefit would be. Mm -hmm. Well, they stopped sending those out anymore, too, because they want you to go to that ssa.gov website, mm -hmm. and so you can estimate your benefits there. Um, but how they're calculated is actually based off of the highest 35 years of income adjusted for inflation. So those are things that kind of impact your benefits Sometimes I get questions about, well, what if I go part-time? You know, is that going to hurt my benefits, mm -hmm. too? Usually the answer is no, okay. but it's things that people are worried about just because they don't necessarily have all the information on, like I said, those 2,000 laws out okay. there. Okay. So uh, over 35 years, that's interesting. I mm -hmm. haven't heard that one. So is it amortized over the 35 years? They take an average of what that is, and then that's what your benefit is? It's what it's based off based of, off. too. So there's a, okay. it's kind of a complicated formula. The good news is you don't have to know the math. Okay. All that really matters is what that final number is going to be, too. And then right. it's calculated based off of when you actually file for benefits and how you file for benefits. Okay. So what, uh, what kind of changes can we expect down the road to keep our Social Security sustainable? So it's definitely a good question. So I'm 36. You know, I've got a big concern. Is that Social Security benefit going to be there mm -hmm. for the year that I actually get full retirement age, 2047? <laughs> Not a lot of people use that number in a sentence and it seems far away. There's good and bad news with that. The good news is, is based off of current estimates, even if they don't change anything, they can fully fund Social Security for the next 20 years and then fund it about 75% through the year 2090. Here's the good and bad news is that they are changing things. And so there are gonna be some things coming down the pipeline. They just made two changes just back in April where file restricted and file and suspend strategies 
have gone away or are limited for people kind of moving forward. So there's a lot of things we'll continue to see probably where they may raise taxes. They might change some of those ages of when you can file as well as some okay. of the ways so you can do it. So that's some of the ways that you'll help people through it. Now, what do you recommend for people who are thinking about filing? So probably the best thing to do is sit down with someone like myself that can actually call my office and we can schedule some time to look at their individual situation too. So I like finding money for people, especially with Social Great. Security, because um, it's a big foundation for most people's retirement. Absolutely. Um, just a couple weeks ago, I uh, met a couple, you know, wife was 68, still working. Husband was actually already drawing Social Security benefits. What she didn't realize is that she could be defiling she'd file a restricted application and get about a thousand dollars a month while she lets her benefit grow. And it's one of those things, unfortunately, a Social Security office is never going to call you and say, hey, you forgot to ask for your thousand dollars. Of course not. Too. And that can make not. a huge difference in Absolutely. someone's income. Absolutely. Huh? Yeah, I mean, really? Yeah. yeah. So these are the things that you'll help people find. Exactly. Yeah. Wonderful. Where can they go and uh, website, phone number, anything you'd like them to know? Yeah, Get certainly. in touch that. with you. So they can, you know, come see my office. I'm on uh, Manatee Avenue in Bradenton. Um, but they can give me a call at 941-761-1217. They can check out my website at edwardjones.com slash matt-mcswain. Great. Thank you, Matt, for being here. And I have a lot more questions for you after the show. <laughs> Suncoast FYI will be right back.